So all semester we've been talking about Java synchronizers. We've been talking about Java threading mechanisms. And all the assignments that you've done have been in the context of Android. But we really haven't spent very much time talking about Android at all in the course. So we're going to spend some time now, uh, today, and then after the quiz, or, you know, the quiz is on Wednesday <laughs> this week. But following week, we'll continue on with discussions of Android. And that'll segue nicely into the next assignment. OK, so we'll start off by talking about the concept of layered architectures. So we'll first explain what is a layered architecture. And then we'll talk about you know, how this applies more specifically to Android. So layering is a concept that's applied lots of different places. You're probably familiar with it. Um, if you buy uh, you know, certain kinds of desserts, you've got layers. If you go to uh, certain parts of the world, you can see layered pyramids. We wear layered clothes if it's cold or hot depending on the season, and so on and so forth. A classic example where layering is applied, which you've undoubtedly learned of if you've taken a networking course here or, or heard about networking, is in the context of computer networking protocol stacks. So protocol stacks are there to enable end-to-end -end communication by specifying certain things about the data. How is it uh, broken up into chunks? How is it uh, addressed to get to its destination? How is it transmitted? How is it routed? How is it received? How is it reassembled? These are all the kinds of things that a protocol stack deals with. And you can see that there's different layers in a protocol stack, seven or four, depending on which type of abstraction you're dealing with. The lower layers in the layered protocol stack typically describe how the interaction takes place with the transmission media, the physical part, like the, you know, the, the ethernet or, or the uh, you know, over a wireless connection, over a wired connection, and so on. And there's all kinds of different protocols for that. There's cellular protocols. There's um, protocols for dealing with things in Wi-Fi, and so on and so forth. That's kind of the lower layer stuff. More of a computer engineering double E type of topic. The middle layers in the protocol stack deal with how are packets exchanged from end to end across different routers, from host to host across the different routers in the system. And some of the classic protocols of this space are the internet protocol, and the transmission control protocol, and the user datagram protocol, and so on and so forth. So those are different protocols for getting information sent either reliably or unreliably across a network. And then there's also what are typically called the upper layer protocols, things like the, the, the session layer, the presentation layer. And they're really dealing with how do you interact with applications? Do you encode the data in a way that's going to be network neutral, what's the encoding format. There's sort of binary encoding formats like XDR and CDR. There's more text-oriented formats like JSON or XML for kind of putting the data in a format that can be sent across between different types of hardware, different types of operating systems. And then finally, the, the upper part, which is loosely called the application layer, which is actually where all the cool stuff happens, really. Um, that's the part that sort of deals with interacting with the user and providing capabilities. So things like the file transfer protocol, Telnet, which is a remote login capability supplanted by SSL, of course, these days, uh, the simple mail transfer protocol, the simple network management protocol, all these different protocols that are sort of dealing with application-y kinds of things. There's also layers of middleware. There's also layers of middleware. And if you think about the network protocol stack, which we see here, this thing called the application layer from the networking protocol stack world, it actually has a bunch of layers too. And so these are sort of parts of the layers of that, quote, application layer. Um, and the basic goal of middleware is to provide services above and beyond what the operating systems and the network protocols provide, what we just looked at, in order to enable components in a distributed or a network system to communicate and manage data effectively. So the lower layers of the middleware protocol stack are really involved with abstracting away from the hardware and the operating systems. So you don't have to know how those things work and all the different accidental complexities and non-portability aspects of the different operating systems. For example, Windows has its own API, and Linux has its own API, and other versions of Unix have their own APIs. 
and VxWorks has its own API. So there's lots of different APIs, and one of the jobs of middleware is to abstract those non-portable APIs in a common API, where at least in theory you can write once and run anywhere. A good example would be the Java Virtual Machine. Uh, you can also think about the ACE framework that I've developed years ago. The middle layers of middleware, these layers, shield the applications from the details of network programming. So you have things like the data distribution service, web services, um, message queue transfer, MQTT, uh, Spring, which is a Java framework for doing web programming websites, Corba, et cetera, et cetera. Lots of different middleware that help make it easier to write applications where you don't have to know the details of the network. And then the upper layers provide domain-specific services for certain domains. So you, if you're working in avionics, you might use the future airborne capability environment. If you're working in the industrial internet, you might use protocols and middleware services defined by the industrial internet consortium. If you're working in the, the medical domain, there's middleware there. So each of these things plays a certain role in trying to make it easier to build applications. And that's really, you know, that's really the gold standard, to try to make it easier to write applications by abstracting away from all these details and making reusable services. OK, so just some examples of layering. So that's a quick overview of layered architectures and layering as an abstraction. And then we'll talk in a second about you know, why you would want to do all this kind of stuff, just giving you a quick overview here of what layering means.